Ah, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back to Sultan Sanctuary. Uh, previously, I think at the end of the last episode, uh, I had been chatting about the Mad Alchemist, how the general design of the boss I didn't actually like so much. Uh, the whole DPS race, um, if you don't have a certain amount of damage, you're gonna have a tough time. Uh, if you have a set amount of damage, is one of the easiest bosses in the game. Uh, I don't really like that. If you're gonna set the boss's difficulty, uh, rather base it on the skill set that the boss has, not just a matter of what your stats are when you meet him. Sometimes that just isn't enough to make it fun. Uh, but I don't know. It's just me talking late at night um, ba -ba, about two hours after doing the commentary of the previous episode. But of course, you're not seeing them. You're not going to see them on the same day, of course. They're still into edit and stuff, but it's pretty much 2.30 in the morning right now doing post-commentary. And to be honest with you, I am happy with the post-comment, uh, post, uh, how can I say this, format for this game. Because at least when I get to play the game, there isn't much to distract me from learning how to actually play the game. I think if I did live commentary, yeah, I would make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> there wouldn't really be much time to think you'd just be talking, but not really sure. So finally, I think this was like round four with the Mad Alchemist. Decided to go straight with the fire buff and DPS the crap at the boss. Don't even give him any chance to <laughs> do anything. And... His AoE spells do a lot of damage, so really you'd rather get caught by the slimes than get caught by his AoE damage. If you can get a full charged attack, definitely the thing to go for. But besides that, as you can see, the boss himself doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time if you have high damage and a weapon buff. Um, this is a plus 2 morning star, 13 strength, 13 endurance, and fire buff. Really, he, he didn't last long. Once known as the Razpu Razpin Grand Tier of Alchemy and Salves, this mindless creature has become a murderous, uh, murderous husk of its former self. A rotten walker, some form of drowned human rotted by time and weather. Many drowned things, etc. Marauders, salt bats, and otherworldly shadow. The sword and knight, protector of the what of the festering banquet. The sword and knight bears decades of dried sea salt on his tattered shroud, killing all salt born as they come to the festering banquet. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. The alchemist could have been done. Could have the, uh, the fight could have been done better. I feel that the fact that you can't really take your time with the boss takes away from what the boss has to offer. Of course, he has a skill set. He has things that he does, he has patterns, and analyzing these patterns and understanding them is part of the joy of learning a boss, learning a game, and enjoying what the game has to offer. But, in the case of the Mad Alchemist, it seems as if the patterns that he's supposed to have... I can't say, it. they're not spaced well, well enough. It's all too crowded. The first quarter of his life bar, first third of his life bar, things are okay. Then after that, things just go crazy, instantly crazy. There is no gradual increase. It's just an instant, oh my goodness, the mad scientist gone crazy. And I don't know. Given the situation you're put in, I don't think it's really a, uh, it was a good fight at all. 
you don't really get to appreciate him in any way. And I feel that hurts him as a boss, making him not so memorable at all. I'm gonna jump down the side, go pick up this item, secret item. Try to look for anything in the corner. If I missed it, oh, there we go. Get the leather corset. Should I say the leather cuirass? In the old style, iron is rare, but skilled leather workers nonetheless make some cool ass cuirasses. Good slash and fire resistance, good holy arcane resistances. A rather light, but not very light. Interesting little piece of armor. Not sure if it counts as a light armor set or a heavy armor set. I don't, because the thing is, it's not exceptionally light, but it's not heavy either. I think it's nine points of weight for the cuirass itself, the chest piece. Let's take the vow of the stone roots, get that achievement, make an offering. I believe I got a guide in this particular section, a guide and a blacksmith. I'm not too sure. One thing I would like to know about cell swords is that I understand that the cell sword is used for co-op. If you have a cell sword in the sanctuary, you can speak to him and then uh, you can do some local co-op. Um, but if there is no local co-op, hold on. Hey, I love alchemy ingredients, ashes, tusks, horns, ears, old life for new, I always say. Every alchemy requires four things, an original, an ingredient, a catalyst, and salt. An original is the thing we're performing alchemy upon, could be a sword, axe, whatever. An ingredient is what determines the results and usually contains some remnants and a memory. Ears are my favorite. A catalyst is what drives the reaction. Catalysts are usually the hardest parts to come across, but they are oddly common here. And salt is salt. Salt powers the reaction and is consumed in the process. I know sorts of alchemy, but in the continents I was able to practice nearly as much as I do now. Let's run out of dialogue. It's interesting that some of these stone uh, figures actually have a little bit of dialogue. He's got the blade that... So, is that it? I think we got it in the previous episode. For some reason. Or oh, did I get it before I started recording? The Craymore. Uh, I like the way they... They spelt it. How it's uh, pronounced... Oh, phonetically pronounced when spoken in Japanese, Kureimor, not Claymore, it's actually a Claymore, <laughs> just so you know. I uh, am. Yeah. Have you the speed of the forest? I've lived in the friendly woods for as long as I can remember. The woods here are treacherous, well, fix that, won't we? I've lived in the friendly woods for as long as I can remember. Is repeating his dialogues. Yes, he is. I don't understand what his work is. You can turn... Oh, I think I understand. He has work in the sense that he wants certain things. So, three rotten walkers' ears will probably give you something for them. I didn't understand that when I first came here. I just thought about it right now. Let's level up, get to level 17. It's gonna cost a lot of salts, but we've got some black pearls. Let's level up. My goal for this build so far, considering I don't know much about this game, is to put in a reasonable, reasonable amount of strength, endurance, and willpower. Well, at least enough willpower to wield a heavy armor set, but still be able to roll at a very decent speed. And then strength and endurance, of course, for the damage and the stamina. Whatever points we have left after that, 
and probably pump them into wisdom. Probably look for some prayer weapon buff of some sort. Checking at the skill tree. Now, quite a lot of points to put in makes you wonder. Are you supposed to complete this tree maybe with subsequent new games? You keep on advancing in the same tree? Or are you supposed to clear it in one playthrough? Cray more 14 to 40 damage. That range is huge, M making it a very unreliable weapon, but when you get to hit that 40 damage, my goodness, it can be a banger. Willpower. I really took some time analyzing this tree. I'm, I'm, I'm actually now just sitting here looking, wondering where exactly can I go, what can I do within this first playthrough, what, what can make this build interesting. I really like, I really want the big strength weapon, something that hits very, very hard. Just, just for the sake of, I'm, I'm tired of fast hitting weapons or small smaller class weapons I'm tired of long swords i don't know <laughs> i spent literally the whole of my dark souls 3 playthrough using long swords when i lost my save i went back to using katanas katanas and twin blades all oh, these small blades i've been using for so long i think the last time i used a relatively big weapon was my playthrough of dark souls 1 i believe the first playthrough of Dark Souls 1 that I uploaded was a Demon Great Axe build with like 50 strength. I'm not too sure. Not 50 strength, maybe it was even 40. I remember I was always two, uh, two handing a, great, a Demon Great Axe. It really did a buttload of damage if you got a hit on that. But then my second playthrough of Dark Souls 1 went back to long swords. Oh well. Now we're using the Craymore as our two-handed weapon. We're still going to use the same charm that increases damage. Hopefully you get to see some of the sweet damage that we'll get to deal with the Claymore. But the problem is the swing speed is quite very slow in comparison to the Morning Star. So in that regard, maybe instead of using the charm that increases damage, it might make more sense to use the charm that increases attack speed because the damage is already very good. The charm makes the damage ridiculously good. But still, if I'm one-shotting enemies while using the, we the, the weapon charm and I'm one-shotting enemies without the weapon charm, then there's no real reason of having the weapon charm until I find weapons like uh, enemies that I can't one-shot. But pretty much, we're going to be using the, 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 the Craymore as our two-handed weapon of choice. And we're um, going to be using the Morningstar in our one hand. I think I died here. Yep. Be using the Morning Star in one hand, Craymore in the other, but um, there are some cool one-handed weapons that I've seen in this game. I've even seen, mm, let me not spoil it, but I've seen something very interesting that I'd like to try out. But in terms of two-handed weapons, we'll be definitely using the Craymore for now. Definitely. Seven, fifty-seven, sixty-three damage. Bloated monstrosity's ear. And chew on some red grass. Move on. Mm. 
I don't know. One thing I haven't actually gotten ch uh, a chance to experiment with, which is probably something that I definitely will experiment with, is projectiles based weapons, i.e. crossbows, bows, and whatever else they have. I, I remember I threw a few throwing knives in the beginning of this playthrough, a really weird aiming system. I really have to say it's quite weird. Um, but I don't know how bows work. I'm, I'm not sure how crossbows work. And if there are any firearms in this game, I'll be really interested to see how exactly they work. I wouldn't mind having a second build that focuses primarily on projectile class weapons, bows, crossbows, guns. And then instead of having a shield, maybe you can have some one-handed weapon with a projectile based weapon so maybe like a whip and a crossbow or a dagger and a crossbow and then you two hand um a great bow or you two hand um something huge i don't know whatever your choices whatever your choices are I like the over the, the the swinging arc of the claymore though even though I said it's a slow weapon <clears throat> it covers it covers the area slightly behind and above your head all the way down to your toes and in front of you so you best believe that it's very difficult for an enemy to jump over you and cross you up you will definitely get good damage on it I wonder where I was going here. I was doing quite a lot of backtracking in these past episodes. Oh snap! I was doing a lot of backtracking. Hmm. But for what reason, I'm not sure. Evanescent. That's a level 3 light armor. I wouldn't mind trying it out, I guess, at some point, depending on how this build goes. But it's definitely not certain for now. I don't know. It's very tricky. But trying to have to find a way to figure out the law of the game, we still have to figure out where this guy's uh, piece or parcel of earth is, how to get below this particular ramp and deal with that and then figure out what's the story of this game exactly what's going on i don't know if we're still looking for the princess if that's still a thing but if it is i wonder where the hell the princess is because no one has spoken anything about her still need to find a way to use this obelisk well, I know the way, like, how exactly they're used, but... Still need to find the person who will grant us the ability to use them. Traverse with the obelisk. Oh, now that I think about it, I think you might have to use the obelisk to get down here. Use the obelisk to get there, then, yeah, probably. That's how it works. Nope, we haven't seen your trinkets. slimes really have quite amazing physical damage resistance whether it's slash or bludgeoning it doesn't matter morning star clay more all the same probably just weak to elemental damage usually if my dark souls knowledge were to serve me correctly they're weak to fire but we don't have any fire attacks so and this will gonna weapon buff but there's no need they die in two shots Let's see what we picked up here. Battle axe. I don't know if there's a class that starts with a battle axe. Class one weapon. I'm assuming maybe. But I know there's an enemy here that uses a battle axe. Interesting. Still looking for a decent one-handed weapon that looks cool. 
don't know how the katanas in this game function. But I wouldn't mind seeing one. Or oh, is it possible to dual wield? That's one other aspect that hmm it's got me thinking. <clears throat> If you can equip a weapon on your shield, um, because I can see there's the slot with the, on the one-handed section, or the, how can I say this, your loadout number one. There's the, sl there's the slot with the morning star. There's the slot with the shield, and then there's an empty slot. So I'm assuming maybe that empty slot you can equip a charm on it, so that you can have a charm on your first loadout, and then after that. The weapon and shield section is the shield section exclusively for shields? Or can you put a weapon there? And also we got a buckler. I'm gonna have to try that out, try see if we can get some good parries on it. But besides that, I think that will be it for this particular episode. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.